Welcome back to Domain 4 of the Security Plus Exam Cram Series 2024 edition. And here in Section 4.9, we'll focus on data sources to support our security investigations. We'll begin with a look at an array of log types and what they can reveal when we bring them together. We'll then touch on what vulnerability scans and packet captures can add to the mix before we wrap with a look at reports and dashboards and how we can pull all of this disparate data together to give us clarity on the big picture. Great information for a future SOC analyst. Let's get into it. Welcome back to what will be the last session here in Domain 4, in Section 4.9. We're focused on data sources. So here the syllabus asks us to use data sources to support an investigation. So we're going to talk about log data and then we're going to talk about other complementary or supporting data sources. And these are many of the logs that will be collected and aggregated by a security information and event management system, a SEM solution. And I mentioned that because bringing all those logs together is going to ease investigation. So let's quickly revisit a visual from section 4.1 where we talked about log ingestion with a SEM solution. So the SEM is our central point of aggregation. So our SQL database logs, whether those are IaaS or PaaS database instances, we dump those logs into our SEM. Identity as a service, our cloud identity platforms, our hybrid identity, typically we're going to be dumping that into the SEM through an API. Network appliances, physical and virtual appliances, typically via syslog, our XDR solutions, endpoint activity data, virtual machines. We can typically deploy a local agent of some sort that will allow us to send various log data up, syslog from Linux, your event logs from the Windows side, then your CASB, which helps with tracking your protected data usage. So there we're going to send usage alerts and events over to our SIM. All just a few examples. Many of your SEM solutions will have dozens, if not hundreds, of connectors. And it's important to investigation because it accelerates investigation through aggregation of those logs and at least semi-automation of investigation in many cases using the SOAR capability. Certainly faster to query across all those logs in a single central location as opposed to running individual queries across network, infrastructure, and application endpoints. But let's dig into our data sources and talk about our log data. So from an investigation perspective, by examining specific types of logs, you can pinpoint when and where malicious activities took place. So for example, with firewall logs, we can track network traffic entering and leaving our network. Now that's in the case of north-south traffic, but with east-west traffic, we can also investigate traffic that's moving around within our environment. If it's passing through the firewall, it should get logged, we can collect that. But they record the traffic allowed or blocked by the firewall based on predefined rules. We talked about rule-based access control, which is the access control implementation we see in firewalls. We have application logs, which capture the events and activities within specific applications. Of course, that's going to vary by application, but it can provide insights into user actions, errors, and anomalies within the application. Not all apps are created equal. And next, we have endpoint logs. So these are generated by your individual devices or endpoints. So on the client side, your desktops or laptops. On the server side, your physical servers or your virtual machines. And they record system events. They record user activities. They record security-related information specific to each endpoint. And when you think about that fact, just having to query those individually would be quite a task, thus the mention of centralization to facilitate easier investigation. And you have OS-specific security logs. So these are generated by the operating system and they focus on security-related events very narrowly. So that's the security event log on Windows, it's syslog on Linux. And this can include information about user logins, privileged account activities, and your system configurations. You have intrusion prevention, intrusion detection systems, IPS and IDS, which record detected security threats, 
suspicious activities, and potential attacks on the network. Your IPS logs will include entries of the threats they block. Intrusion detection will log a threat, potentially alert on a threat, but it's not going to block it. And then we have our network logs. These capture traffic and activities related to our network, traffic flowing through our network devices. From a device perspective, we're talking about routers and switches primarily. The logging typically happens via syslog, the same facility you'd see with Linux. In fact, most network devices, in my experience, we're forwarding our syslogs over to a Linux syslog server often. This can include information about the network connections, data transfers, and communication between devices. And then we have metadata. So metadata is data about other data created as part of files, documents, database transactions, and quite a bit more actually. So in terms of files, that would mean file information like created date, who created it, when it was modified, and when it was last accessed. Email metadata would include items like the header, who sent it, who they sent it to, and when they sent it. On the web, that would include items in the header of a web page, like the title, the character set, and other info developers add using the meta tag. Mobile is a rich data source of evidence for investigators because it includes the user's location, their call history, their message history, their website history, any tracking that happens automatically because of their device configuration or their app configurations. If you think about all of the functions the average user performs in a day's time on a mobile device, that can be the best source of information in some situations. And more generally, there's metadata related to endpoints, devices, and management platforms that can enrich your SEM data. So the metadata logs that would include data about the data and log entries like timestamps, source and destination IP, user and device identifiers in your management platforms. And you'll have some elements of your device properties that change over time, so this is a way to track some of those changes. But, you know, in the real world, when aggregating logs, timestamps are going to be important when we're bringing all of those disparate log types together. So this metadata helps security solutions, your SAM and XDR solutions, in correlating events and understanding the sequence of logged activities. And the syllabus refers to some additional data sources that can augment our log data. And what they're talking about there are data sources that offer additional insights to complement logs in the investigation of security incidents. For example, your vulnerability scans, which provide insight into potential vulnerabilities in systems, networks, and applications. We've talked about that before. But the scan reports can reveal if unpatched weaknesses might be exploited in the current incident. You may be able to make use of automated reports generated by security tools and systems that automatically collect and analyze data. So this can provide a high-level overview of suspicious activity and help us to prioritize our investigation efforts. If we're going to do some proactive threat hunting, this may give us a lead on what we want to hunt for. You know, essentially visibility into recent suspicious activity. And another potential source is dashboards, which offer a centralized view of security metrics and alerts, and analyzing trends and spikes in these dashboards can help identify ongoing attacks or emerging threats, often showing us trends and changes in trends, anomalies if you will. And last but not least, we have packet capture. So packet captures provide detailed information about the data being transmitted, including the contents of the packet. So this can reveal malicious content within packets, identify the source of the attack, or reveal exactly how vulnerabilities are exploited. So where reports and dashboards are taking us top down, packet captures are quite the opposite. They're revealing protocol level details so coming bottom up. And probably not the first tool we'll resort to, but if we're performing an investigation and we need to get down to the causal factors, digging into the protocol level may give us that last few yards that fully answers exactly how a vulnerability was exploited into a full-blown attack. Well, my friends, that brings us to the end of Section 4.9 and indeed the end of Domain 4. I hope you're getting value from the series. As always, if you have questions, leave them in the comments below the video or reach out directly on LinkedIn. Always happy to help where I can. I'll look forward to seeing you back here in the next day or so to kick off Domain 5. And until next time, take care and stay safe.